All right, uh, so um, let's start. I'm sure other people will be joining us uh, later. Thank you for first and welcome to this webinar. Um, we have uh, three webinars this week. This one is in English, but we also have one in Spanish tomorrow and one in Portuguese on Thursday. Um, the, for this webinar, um, I will be uh, presenting for Bon Sucro, a section of the information and we are lucky to have with us uh, Dr. Karl Mackie, who's the president founder of CEDA, who are collaborating with Bon Sucro on the implementation of the new grievance mechanism. You will also hear uh, Liz, who is the communications manager at Bon Sucro, who is supporting uh, with the, um, with the um, webinar. Um, First, uh, I wanted to say a few uh, points about the logistics, if I may say so. Um, I will be presenting a first section on, on the background of the project and the overall ecosystem, and we will have a question session for about 15-20 minutes. Then Carl will present uh, the overall grievance mechanism uh, of Bon Sucro, and we'll have a longer qu uh, question session afterwards. So I would um, recommend that uh, maybe any question relating to the grievance mechanism itself is kept to the second question session so that we can have a full uh, discussion on this. In terms of submitting question uh, from a practical point of view, uh, we have a Q&A uh, uh, functionality I'm sure you are familiar with in Zoom where you can type your question and uh, my colleague Liz will triage the questions to Carl and I and might also answer some of them in writing. We will not be unmuting attendees to try to see as many questions through as possible and, uh, and maximize the time spent on that webinar. Another uh, point of uh, logistics as well, uh, this webinar is here to inform you about the new system and process we've developed and the project around it. It will not be uh, an opportunity or a forum to discuss actual cases. If you have concern about an ongoing case or if you would like to raise an allegation or discuss anything that might have been in the news, I would encourage you to message us directly. Uh, my email is selin at bonsucro.com. You will see the email addresses at the end of the webinar on the last slide as well. So without further ado, I would like maybe to um, move to the start of the presentation. So um, as you know, on Monday 15th of June 2020, we launched our Complaints and Grievances Management System on the Bon Sucro website. If you go on the landing page under About Bon Sucro, you can click on Complaints and Grievances and access a whole wealth of resources and options. That system gives users and stakeholders options to voice their concerns or raise a complaint regarding Bon Sucro members, but also Bon Sucro auditors and certification bodies, and Bon Sucro itself as an organization. Now, the actual Bon Sucro grievance mechanism that was launched at the same time is one of those options. And today's presentation is gonna give you that overview of options and then have a deep dive, thanks to, to, to Carl being here, uh, into the grievance mechanism itself and all the options it includes. But before we move on to, um, sorry, so that's the section we're going to cover. We're going to have a bit about the project background. Then we'll look at the different options in the system. I will mention a new project we have about promoting workers and community voices. We'll have the question session, then a full on session about the grievance mechanism and some more questions. Before we actually uh, start that first section of the webinar, I would like to share with you a, um, um, a video message from our CEO. Um, Hello, 
Thank you for taking part in this webinar on Bonsucro's new grievance mechanism. If you don't know me, I'm Danielle Morley, the CEO at Bonsucro. Improving our grievance mechanism to meet international human rights standards was one of my priorities when I joined Bonsucro two years ago. It's designed to complement our new code of conduct for members, which can Okay, sorry, I think the video might not have worked. I'm gonna try again. Hello, thank you for taking part in this webinar on Bonsucro's new grievance mechanism. If you don't know me, I'm Danielle Morley, the CEO at Bonsucro. Improving our grievance mechanism to meet international human rights standards was one of my priorities when I joined Bonsucro two years ago. It's designed to complement our new code of conduct for members, which came into force in April this year, and was thoughtfully crafted with consideration for the effectiveness criteria of the UN Guiding Principles on Business and Human Rights. At Bon Sucre, we always seek input from our members and the wider community of stakeholders to ensure that we create systems that are fair, robust, and inclusive. This grievance mechanism is the product of over a year of hard work that included multiple consultations with members, stakeholders, including NGO groups and legal experts. We were advised by DLA Piper, an international law firm, and have since partnered with the Centre for Effective Dispute Resolution, who will manage and mediate any incoming complaints against our members. I'm really proud of all the hard work that's gone into it and the outcome that we've designed together. I'm sorry I can't be with you virtually today, but thank you for joining. And as always, if you have any further comments or questions, don't hesitate to reach out to myself or a member of our team. Okay. So, sorry for the technicality earlier on. Um, now we're going to resume with the actual uh, webinar. So, um, first of all, we, I would like to give you a bit more background about the project. Um, and I thought it would be a good place to start from the definition of a grievance mechanism because, you know, Working across different languages as well at Bon Sucro, there is different uh, terminology out there. And when we talk about grievance mechanism, it's very specific as to the situation is um, um, addressing. A grievance mechanism is a complaint process that can be used by individuals, workers, communities, and or civil society organizations that are being negatively affected by certain business activities and operations. It can be formal, legal or non-legal, judicial or non-judicial. And it can also be called complaints or redress or accountability mechanism. And I think that's interesting to start from there. It's about the business activities and operation affecting negatively these type of stakeholders. So starting from that, um, why did we develop a grievance mechanism? I think it comes back to Bon Sucro's mission. Our mission is to ensure that responsible sugarcane production creates lasting value for the people, communities, businesses, economies, and ecosystems in all cane growing origins. Bon Sucro's strategy is to build a platform to accelerate change for the largest agricultural commodity in the world, which is sugarcane. And why that grievance mechanism being effective is so important? Well, it is important because an effective grievance mechanism, it's a way to encourage that proactive compliance, that change management, that risk management, and the possibility of a remediation. It's also very important for Bon Sucre as a scheme because it demonstrates our credibility as a scheme to all stakeholders, including members, buyers, ICL, the OECD, the European Commission, as we are accredited to EU Red. So for, from the point of view of a member, when an organization becomes a member and engage with Bon Sucre, 
the member commits to a set of principles to promote this change as part of a mission in the sugarcane sector and giving an outlet to stakeholders to complain is a key element, a key tool to identifying what changes are required and what risks must be managed in the supply chain. So from that point of view, engaging with the grievance mechanism we've developed can be seen as a valuable business investment for a Bon Sucre member. How did we develop it? I will briefly touch on this as Danielle already mentioned it. The development of our grievance mechanism was supported by DLA Piper, who is an independent law firm, where we received significant input from CEDA, the Center for Effective Dispute Resolution, who have been uh, appointed now and contracted by Bon Sucro to manage to administrate the grievance mechanism for the year ahead. We also had a public consultation um, in December 2019, January 2020. And uh, we are very grateful for the valuable input we received from you. It's helped us not only finalize the grievance mechanism, but it's also helped us uh, identify key objectives for a project I will mention later about accessibility to the grievance mechanism. And of course, as we developed uh, that mechanism, we followed the UNGP guidance on grievance mechanisms. Now, again, a quick reminder about the UNGP. As you know, the UNGP are a set of 31 principles which have been defined to guide the implementation of the UN Protect, Respect and Remedy Framework. The framework aims at enhancing standards and practices regarding business and human rights. And the three pillars of the approach are the state duty to protect human rights, the corporate responsibility to respect human rights, and also the access to remedy for victims of business-related abuse. And that's where we can really kind of see where the grievance mechanism will fit in. When it comes down to the grievance mechanism and developing, as I mentioned earlier, an effective grievance mechanism, the, the UNGP, the principle number 31, gives you some criteria to, to meet. And that, those are the criteria we use to scrutinize the document and the process we were developing. So a, a grievance mechanism to be effective must be legitimate. It must be accessible, predictable, equitable, transparent, rights compatible, a source of continuous learning, and we are at the beginning of the journey, and based on engagement and dialogue, which is very important. These are the principles we assessed our grievance mechanism against, and a key element for us was also to make sure that this was gonna be embedded in our assurance system as one of the options for our stakeholders to complain and raise their concern. So, to that effect, what we've done is we've developed that grievance mechanism, but we've also remembered all those other options that are out there. I mean, when I say all, it's not all, but we've mapped all the ones we've had been using over the years as a range of options to try to address the needs of stakeholders. The grievance mechanism is not gonna fit every single need. And I will explain a bit more about this now. So why did we develop this ecosystem on our website. The grievance mechanism, I would refer to it uh, as the state-of-the-art tool for Bon Sucro to, um, to ensure that stakeholders can raise a complaint. However, we have to acknowledge that it also has some level of complexity uh, and all the options we're offering might be more suited to the complainant expectation. They might want to complain about the quality of the audit. They might want to voice uh, some allegation to be uh, followed up at audits. Also, when it comes down to the grievance mechanism, it is costly. Having a professional service dealing with the complaint and assessing them thoroughly, giving support with mediation, uh, is very, very important uh, to us, but it means that we've allocated a budget at Bon Sucro, specific budgets to finance the case going through the grievance mechanism this year. And we're looking into additional funding, but it means for the time being, it will be a limited budget. 
Also, as I mentioned earlier, the grievance mechanism is very specific in its scope. It's about complaints against Bon Sucre members, and we could receive complaints about all the actors in the Bon Sucre system. So the way we've designed it, we designed it on our web page uh, to um, help the user choose which options might be best for them. And we decided to design it when you go on that web page from what the complainant generally knows. He doesn't know which, which option he wants to use. Uh, the complainant generally knows who they are, so they can situate themselves in the system, whose action they wish to complain about, and what outcome they expect. And based on that information, we've designed on our website um, a network of options for them to navigate without influencing their choice. When applicable, they can always go to the grievance mechanism and contact CEDAR, but they also are given other options, which I'm going to show you. And the way we defined it as, way is, as well is through three pathways. One is to report the actions of Bon Sucre members, one is to report the actions of an auditor or certification body, and the other one is about Bon Sucre as an organization. So the most complex, maybe, is the one around um, the actions, reporting the actions or complaining about a Bon Sucre member or applicant member. There, the options available depend on the status of the organization you wish to complain about. Are they applying for membership? You get a range of options. Are they already an accepted, validated member of Bon Sucre? You get another range of options. Are they applying for certification? This opens new possibilities. Are they a member who is also a certificate holder? And then you get a full range of options to choose from. So the kind of option, depending on these stages, might be the Bon Sucre candidacy, public consultation, due diligence um, process, which was advertised earlier on this year and refreshed with the issuing of our new code of conduct. This is the process where candidate members are listed on the Bon Sucre website and anyone can submit comments or concerns about the organization's suitability to becoming a member of Bon Sucre. Then there is the members own grievance mechanism, uh, both the Bon Sucre code of conduct for its members and the production standard as well, require Bon Sucre member to give stakeholders access to a grievance mechanism. And that can be their own grievance mechanism or another recognized mechanism. Another option could be that uh, they use the process, the certification body allegation and complaints process. So contacting the certification company or the auditing company to raise an allegation. What we've done is on our website, you can now navigate all the certification bodies procedures and direct contacts to raise an allegation about a member organization. What the certification body will do is evaluate the information and when applicable, they will investigate it during the audit. This is not a new process. This is a process that has been existing um, since the beginning of the relationship we have with our certification body. However, we hadn't been advertising it as much. And this is the opportunity to remind everyone that um, the certification body allegation process is a very good process to see through any complaint. The other one, obviously, is then the Bon Sucre grievance mechanism, which we're going to talk about um, uh, in a moment with Carl, which is applicable to Bon Sucre members and is on the basis of a breach of a code of conduct or standards and is independently managed by CEDAR. So it's not applicable in all cases, that grievance mechanism. For example, if it relates to a criminal case or you require an urgent action to be done, grievance mechanism might not be the most adequate uh, process and we can discuss that a bit more later. The second pathway is complaints or to report the actions of a Bon Sucre auditor or certification body and for that one the big difference in the options is around the fact whether you are a client of a certification body or if you are a third party complaining about the certification body. So you might decide that you're unhappy about the service so you could complete the post audit survey from Bon Sucro so we can have your impression as a client of the service you've received. 
you might use the certification body allegation and complaints process to complain about the quality of the service or make an allegation about um, a, a, a meal. Uh, you can also, if you are a client of the certification body and you're unhappy about a certification decision they made, you can use the appeal process to appeal the decision. And then you can also decide to escalate the matter to Bon Sucro uh, in terms of maybe the quality of the audit uh, or the output of the audit. And we can uh, oversee that as part of the, our annual oversight process of the certification body performance. The third pathway is the options available to report the action of Bon Sucro. Because obviously what we're trying to do is help the user understand if the complaint is about the activity of a Bon Sucro member, but they might have some concern about the quality of the audit, or they might have concern about Bon Sucro as a scheme. And, and we have to be very transparent and open about this. We've listed a range of options. Uh, and they, again, they vary depending if you're a Bon Sucro candidate member, a Bon Sucro member, a Bon Sucro licensed certification body or applicant, a Bon Sucro licensed training provider, or a third party organization or individual. And there's a list of options I'm encouraging you to explore on our website for that. What we've included to report Bon Sucro is also the possibility to report to third party organizations. So we've listed contact for ICIL and the European Commission. And the idea is, if you contact ICIL, it would be to uh, maybe raise concern about the way Bon Sucro is implementing the ICIL codes of best practice. So if you had any concern about that, you can contact ICIL to raise your concern. The EU Commission is there because, as you know, we are accredited to carry out not just Bon Sucro, but Bon Sucro EU Red certification. And from that point of view, if you had any concern about the way we implement the EU RED requirements, then you could contact the Commission as well to report this. Last part uh, before we go to question and then we'll move on to the grievance mechanism itself, is the project about promoting workers and community voices, which is a very, very exciting project for us. What we've realized going through that process of developing the mechanism and investigating the options is that one key element is accessibility to the mechanism. And what we've decided to do is to have a project around this for the coming few years to improve that accessibility to the grievance mechanism and other options. Because we cannot stop where we are. It's the beginning of a journey. Um, and, and we want to develop the ecosystem further, more options, more tools, more possibilities and more support. So the way we go about this is like we actively encourage organizations delivering specific services to get in touch with us and explore options to join forces. There is a page dedicated to this project on our website as well. Our main contact at Bon Sucre at the moment is Christelle Delbay, so you can uh, email her directly. Again, the link is on the website. So what are the services we want to uh, target and develop over the next few months? What we're looking for is organizations who could deliver services such as uh, funding cases. As I mentioned earlier, we've allocated a, a yearly budget to finance cases going through the grievance mechanism, and we would like to grow that budget. So if any organization are interested in helping funding cases, we would like them to get in touch. The other service we would like to investigate is translation services for complainant. The information on our website about all this option and the grievance mechanism are available in different languages, but the submission of a complaint through the Bon Sucre grievance mechanism must be in English. So we'd like to see if organization would have services to support complainant submitting the information in English. We would also like to see if organization could be offering advice and case support to complainants. So it could be helping them to choose the best option for them, uh, prepare a case, maybe legal advice. Again, uh, we have a few contacts already, but we'd like to grow and investigate a uh, partnership on this. Another uh, line of uh, research is technology solutions. So could we have a phone line for workers or communities to contact us on? Uh, there are WhatsApp services being developed as well. 
that's something for us to investigate with partners. We would also like to possibly identify mediation alternatives. Now you're going to see, and Carl is going to explain that as part of the bon sucro grievance mechanism, when you submit a complaint through that mechanism, CEDA offers a mediation service, but that's part of that grievance mechanism. However, you might want to choose another mediation service. You might not want to go the Bonsucro grievance mechanism route. And we'd like to see if locally there are mediation services who could also uh, be reached by complainants to help facilitate a dialogue with uh, Bonsucro members. Last but not least, there is a piece around services to raise awareness through training. And there we have two dimensions. There is a dimension about maybe having a capacity building program to empower workers and communities to raise their concerns and seek remedy. So raising that awareness, that grievance mechanism, are a way to voice their concern and um, ask for a change. But also what we would like to do is develop case studies featuring successful remedial actions for environmental and social impact and best practice guidance for Bonsucro members. Because we have learned a lot through this process and we'd like to capitalize and have some sort of a toolbox of possible actions that our members could use to, again, um, facilitate access to remedy. I'm going to stop there. It's a lot of information. So before we move on to uh, the grievance mechanism um, and all the options within that, I would like to invite you to ask questions. Liz, did we have any question raised? Uh, not just yet, no. Okay. Um, so I think now that we have, you have this ecosystem and this understanding where we came from, the journey we've been on so far, the other options available and the project we have to partner with organization to make all of this more accessible, I would like to hand over to um, Carl to introduce us to the Bonsucro Grievance Mechanism and, uh, and give you the full picture of that fantastic new process. Thank you. Thank you, Celine, and good morning, afternoon, or evening to uh, everyone listening. I'm pleased to be joining in the webinar um, and also uh, very pleased to be starting this uh, new and quite exciting initiative uh, with, with Bon Sucro. I thought it might be helpful to say a few words about uh, myself and Cedar, as you may not have heard of Cedar. Um, I'm a lawyer and psychologist by background that around 30 years ago I um, I started an organization, an independent non-profit organization to help promote better conflict management. It was particularly focused on commercial and legal disputes uh, to avoid, to help people avoid the cost and the trauma that was obvious from going through the legal system in many jurisdictions. Uh, and I have also worked in a labor relations for many years with our statutory labor relations agency. And again, I saw the advantage of bringing in more structured processes to adjudicate between unions and management uh, or to conciliate or mediate. Uh, those kind of processes were much less common in those days in the legal system. So CEDAR was launched Centre for Effective Dispute Resolution uh, in order to ensure that uh, these kind of services were available and indeed promoted more actively to companies and to other organisations involved with potentially legal or quasi-legal conflicts. Um, since then, CEDAR has actually managed thousands of cases, mediations, adjudications uh, between businesses, uh, between civil litigants, uh, in consumer cases. In our mediation services, we find that around 70% of previously deadlocked business disputes um, settle as a result of mediation, and, and some more after the mediation day itself. It has proved to be a very powerful way of helping people have a more structured approach to deadlock and conflict in their business disputes. As a result, many businesses now put CEDAR into their um, dispute escalation processes as part of their business con and supply contracts. But this is a new initiative in terms of bringing uh, mediation and a more structured process into the grievance mechanisms around um, 
certification bodies and around uh, business and human rights issues. A few years ago, I, I organized a stakeholder group to look at the use of mediation in business and human rights involving NGOs, companies, trade bodies, uh, and law firms. Uh, and we worked on cases involving child labor, in cases where companies had been said not to consult properly about environmental, environmental damage on new industry sites and so on. And we found uh, just as mediation had worked in civil litigation and commercial disputes, it also worked in these kind of uh, ESG or human rights contexts. So it's, it was a result of that work that uh, we got in touch uh, with Bonsucro, uh, with Celine and Daniel Morley, uh, and the Bonsucro lawyers, DLA Piper, who were uh, at that stage reviewing the grievance mechanism. Uh, and that was a time we decided that um, there could be cedar input and it would be important to have an ind independent process. So the, the process will be managed uh, inside cedar by our director of commercial disputes, Lauren McGill, uh, with support from me, and also one of cedar's case managers, Llewellyn Cannon, will specialize in this particular area. So moving on to the uh, actual, details of and structure of the process. I think the uh, core aim is to produce a more improved and effective process for Bansukra members, but also for those who feel a Bansukra member has not complied with the requirements for the industry that are set out in the standards and certification processes set up by Bansukra. This um, means that there will be some independent input and some more legitimacy as set out in the UN guiding principles. Uh, and the innovation here is particularly the use uh, not of just of using internal processes in Bonsucro, but to directly use an independent organization uh, to oversee um, complaints management. The, the second major aspect of that in, in innovation, of course, is using a specialist uh, conflict management organization. I think most of our panel members, CEDAR itself, is now deeply immersed in conflict management experience and um, so we know what works, what tends not to work. We're not you know, afraid to approach disputes with a, an appropriate, transparent and effective, robust process, but one that can be seen from the outside as legitimate, as fair, as uh, giving both sides a good hearing in order that they get an equitable outcome. Uh, so that's the way we uh, approach conflict management and that's we hope, what we hope to bring to the Bon Sucro grievance mechanism management. Uh, so mo moving on to the details of the process, um, there are, as you will see from the Bonsuka website and CEDAR in due course, uh, quite significant rules in order to make the process appropriately structured and uh, to set out various options for resolving disputes at the earliest possible moment. And um, the first stage is in terms of the uh, complaint submission, step one. Uh, it's obviously important that CEDAR at that stage uh, decides whether the complaint is actually appropriate for the process uh, and eligible to apply under the Bon Sucro uh, grievance mechanism rules. Um, so the complaint has to be about a Bon Sucro member, not a non-member. It has to obviously be involved uh, with activities connected with the sugarcane industry. Um, it has to be properly set out in an application form with a statement of complaint. And in the first year, we have decided that in order for this to be cost effective, uh, complaints will have to be in a certain format. They will have to be submitted in English and limited to a certain number of pages. From our experience, even in very complex commercial cases, people can normally manage to summarize the issues in a case within 25 uh, pages, A4 pages, uh, so that will, what's, that's what we're asking uh, complainants to put it down as a 24 page summary uh, of their complaint and the issues involved in the complaint, how there's been a breach of Bonsucro Code of Conduct or, or Bonsucro standards. Um, but there will be scope for backup evidence and that will be needed for uh, going into the case in more detail. So there's a further uh, 175 pages a limit for those who want to develop their case and give more evidence, which will be required. 
uh, to explain why the complaint is justified, why the grievance is justified, and uh, why the member should be uh, taking action uh, in connection with the complaint. Uh, so anyone can bring a complaint uh, so long as they meet those uh, criteria or they're involved with, as say, as an NGO representing uh, an environmental group or a community that have been affected by the activities of a bon sucre member. Um, so the scope and the grievance mechanism for this complaint submission stage for us to come back to a complainant and say, I'm sorry, your, uh, your complaint falls short in terms of the kind of issues you need to address or the way you set it out. Uh, so there's an initial vetting process to make sure the complaint complies with the rules and is eligible uh, to, to go through the whole process. And because uh, there are costs to running the process, as Celine was mentioning, we will at that stage also assess, uh, for example, it's a very complex complaint uh, or a lot of people are involved, whether there is actually the funding available to uh, address the complaint through the uh, grievance mechanism. Our assumption is, um, first of all, we hope there will not be that many complaints, uh, but also that the complaints will be manageable uh, within the current budget. But obviously, um, if the complaint and grievance mechanism process proves effective, um, there may be a build-up of cases and uh, that might be helpful for the industry if it's dealing with appropriate problems in different parts of the, uh, of the globe. Um, so we will we'll explain right at the outset if there are funds available or if um, there may be need to access other sources of funding. Uh, once we're satisfied that complaints are eligible and in scope, um, then obviously uh, it will be for the uh, respondent, the Bansukra member, um, to reply and uh, respond to the issues. There are time limits throughout the process to ensure that it is timely and um, cost effective again and is um, appropriate for people's you know, assumptions about a good grievance process. Uh, so it has to deal with the issues raised um, and also uh, if there has been uh, an issue ar around certification and the complaint involves the fact that the certification process has been inadequate or whether there's been an audit or so on, then uh, CEDA will check with the certification body uh, to find out whether there has already been a, an appropriate audit, uh, if there's been already a corrective action plan identified by the certification body as part of the certification process and whether that's adequate to deal with the, uh, the complaint. So that information will go back to the member and back to the complainant uh, just to check whether there is already uh, an adequate response to the complaint and whether the complainant would be satisfied with what's anticipated around an audit or the certification process. Um, if the complainant is still not satisfied, then it goes to the next stage of the process. Um, and it's important to mention that as part of the response, the, uh, the Bon Sucre member can actually at that stage uh, offer a way to respond to the complaint and offer a direct remedial action uh, early on in the grievance process and uh, they can make an offer to the complainant uh, that would satisfy the complainant. Uh, so that, that's a very early option within the process. We, we prefer uh, if people can resolve disputes directly uh, without further intervention, and obviously that is cost effective as well. Um, so um, direct resolution is possible at an early stage, and also direct resolution, it's important to say under the rules, is possible at any stage of the process because that is often the best way for uh, complaints to be dealt with. But if there's still a disagreement, we move on to the next formal stage. And again, one of the innovations in the grievance mechanism is to, to formalize the use of mediation. So the next stage would be um, to introduce a mediator. The parties will be uh, offered a mediator to work with the, uh, the case and each party. Uh, that will be done virtually, uh, certainly for the first year, um, not just because of COVID, but because that is a, a good way uh, to handle cost-effectively international disputes. Uh, the mediation process will have a window of around uh, a month uh, to see if the parties can find an amicable settlement uh, without anyone having to make a formal declaration about the rights and wrongs in the issue. 
So the way mediators operate is to have joint and private sessions with the parties. Uh, they will explore the interests of the parties. They will make suggestions about what might work. It's, it's a way of helping people reflect on what's really important in terms of what they're trying to achieve and whether there are compromises available that might help them resolve the matter in an amicable way. So um, normally, as I said at the beginning, uh, people find mediation is, is very effective as a process and takes away the risk of uh, someone else, a third party, just passing a judgment without um, meeting each party's interests and common concerns. It is possible under the rules for people to reject mediation, uh, but th that will be taken into account in, a f in any adjudication uh, later on in the process. The parties can also, um, if they want, if they think the mediation process and the negotiations they're having uh, are proving useful, the parties have got the opportunity to extend negotiations uh, or to ask for medi the mediator for uh, recommendations on settlement because the mediator will by that stage be familiar with the case and might even see a way forward that they think it's important to um, suggest to the parties uh, proactively. Uh, and there, are, there is scope in the rules for cost effect and there's reasons if the parties have confidence in the mediator they may even want the, the mediator to adjudicate the matter between them uh, rather than reach uh, an amicable settlement. So uh, the whole idea of this process and the way the grievance mechanism has been designed is, is really to um, give a lot of flexibility uh, to make sure that disputes can be resolved in the most amicable and effective structured way and at the least cost. Uh, but if there isn't a settlement at mediation, then we move on to the next stage, the next step of the grievance mechanism, and that is adjudication. Uh, it is important to have a fallback, even although most mediations get to a settlement. Uh, it is important to have uh, the, the rule of law and uh, adjudication in, in grievance mechanisms. So this stage ensures that there will be closure of the complaint, a decision about the rights and wrongs of it, even if the parties couldn't agree directly or with the assistance from a mediator. Uh, so at that stage, again, CEDA will appoint an independent adjudicator. Um, their role will be to look at all the documentation that has been produced around the case from either the parties or from the certification body uh, and to make a final decision on whether or not there has been a breach of a bon sucre code of conduct or policies uh, or certification standards. Uh, so that will be an important phase for complaints that there will be a, some kind of final closure, uh, but also uh, some kind of judgment uh, taking into account the details of the rules. Uh, as well as deciding whether there has been a breach, uh, the adjudicator can go further and um, if they think it's appropriate, make recommendations as to conditions uh, that the uh, Bansukra members should comply with going forward uh, or sanctions that might be imposed on the member if there has been a serious breach of the code. Uh, those recommendations, um, which can include suggestions of suspension, monitoring of the member, uh, can, or even expulsion in very serious cases, um, can will go to the Bansukra board and it will be for the Bansukra board to either um, affirm those recommendations uh, or to monitor the conditions that have been set uh, or to adjust the, the recommendations against the member so that um, there can be continued improvement because that is obviously um, an important part of Bansukra membership is to ensure continuous improvement uh, of Bonsukra members' actions and of the sugarcane industry's practices. Uh, if, there is a, if there are recommendations uh, or suggestions of monitoring for a period of time by Bonsukra, that will obviously take place for that period of time and Bonsukra will publish on its website uh, indications of the kind of cases, what stage they've reached uh, and the kind of monitoring processes that are being undertaken. Uh, on behalf of Bon Sucre. And then when the case is closed, that will also be announced on the website. And the complaint will be uh, closed 
at that um, at that stage. So that takes us, I think, through the um, process. Uh, as I said at the beginning, we're very pleased to be collaborating with Bonsucro on this. Um, the, the grievance mechanism may sound complicated, but it is actually a fair, you know, fairly simple series of, series of structured steps, and they're all important in ensuring that there is a process that ensures engagement, uh, that ensures a degree of equitable justice is involved and that ensures finality when it comes to um, anyone who has a grievance against a Bonsucro member. Uh, so we look forward to working with uh, Bonsucro members, with stakeholders and uh, with Bonsucro uh, going forward. Over to you, Celine, for uh, questions. Thank you very much, Carl. Um, that was a very thorough explanation about the grievance mechanism. Uh, it's quite a hefty document. We've tried to maximize, as Carl said, the opportunity for parties to work together on a solution. And that's really what uh, we want to emphasize here. Um, so we are going to be publishing more documents helping guides and uh, to, to help uh, users to understand how to use the grievance mechanism. In the meantime, uh, I would like to open up to questions. For questions, I understand a few questions were submitted already um, in writing. So maybe, Liz, shall we start with those questions and when you can, we can uh, give you the possibility to ask questions verbally uh, by raising your hands. Okay, great. So the first question um, is, the grievance mechanism will also work within organizations and between its suppliers and farmers, or is Bonsucro uh, certification bodies and auditor specific? So maybe I would like to answer this one. Uh, I, I understand it can be a bit confusing. Uh, there is on one side the Bonsucro grievance mechanism, and then there is the overall management system for complaints and grievances. So the way we see the grievance mechanism administrated by SIDA being used is if anyone, whether it's a Bonsucro member, whether it's uh, an NGO, uh, a community, uh, an individual, to be able to use that mechanism to complain about a Bonsucro member. That's what is restricted to. Um, any other complaints, uh, can go through all the options I've presented earlier on, like raising an allegation with a certification body, contacting Bonsucro directly, all those options are on the website. So technically you could say that the grievance mechanism uh, managed by uh, SIDA could see a supplier raising a complaint about another Bonsucro member or a buyer complaining about the activities of a supplier. So that could be the possibility. The important thing is to understand that it has to have to do with the breach of the code of conduct or standards of Bonsucro and that the party, the respondent party, whose actions are being reported is an actual member of Bonsucro. Hope that answer the question. I, I, I will just add to what Selena said uh, in terms of the rules of the grievance mechanism. Um, there's a requirement in making an application for anyone applying to, to note that they have tried direct approaches uh, or grievance mechanisms that are already available, for example, with suppliers, um, that, that they have tried other routes that are available and, and are more direct before they use the full Bonsucro mechanism um, that is managed by CEDAR. So in other words, again, it's um, helping people to think, um, have we done um, the actions we need to do more directly and more simply, if that is possible. They're, either they've tried that and it hasn't worked and they still feel they have a grievance that they feel should be considered by the mechanism that is possible. Uh, or if there might be reasons that they feel vulnerable or that, that you know, it's too sensitive to raise directly with a Bonsucro member. So they may want to come through the form and mechanism for those reasons, but they will have to justify that and explain why they haven't gone and used a more a simpler or more direct mechanism that's already available. Thank you, Carl. That's a very important point to make. Um, Liz, any other questions? 
Yes, the next question um, is regarding the financial model of the grievance mechanism. So the question is, what if there is not enough financial resources available to proceed with the complaint? Will the complaint be rejected? Carl, would you like to take this one? Uh, no, um, the, uh, the worst case is the complaint would be put on hold and we would encourage the complainants to um, you try to seek funding either from N your NGOs that are appropriate for backing up a complaint. I know that Bon Sucre will, as part of its communities uh, and workers project, uh, will also be looking for um, potential avenues of support if there are you know, complainants that are deserving but, and need support to try to find other ways of funding that. I, I mean, there is a core budget, so um, given as long as there are not too many complaints under the grievance mechanism uh, within the first year, then hopefully the budget will be sufficient and adequate for going through a grievance mechanism process and we'll be able to say that to the first few complainants. It's only if there was, a, for some reason, a build-up of uh, quite a number of complaints in any one year uh, or a particularly complicated case involving many, many complainants that there might be issues around uh, the funding, but hopefully there would be uh, funding mechanisms available. And uh, as I said, that, that would mean the complaint was not rejected. It would be put on hold with a request that the parties pursue other avenues for finding appropriate funding. Thank you, Carl. And I would add that the reason why we build the ecosystem around it with other options is that should funding not be sufficient for that financial year, to see a new complaint through, you would also have the alternative of choosing another option. So if the member you're complaining about is certified, you might decide that uh, to raise it through the allegation process of the certification body so that the matter at hand can be investigated and assessed as well. So we've, that's why we're gonna keep on building that ecosystem, not just in terms of funding possibilities, but also alternatives to finding a resolution um, to kind of give a, a choice to stakeholders. Thank you. Great, so the next question um, has two parts. The first is, is the grievance mechanism accessible to anybody in the sugarcane sector, i.e. members and non-members? And the follow-up questions, if not, what can these companies that are not members do? Um, the, shall I answer, Celine? Yes, if you want, Carl. Um, basically, the mechanism is available for anyone affected by the sugarcane industry uh, in, you know, in a negative or detrimental way. Um, but that can be between Bon Supro uh, members as well and, and non-members, so long as they have you know, the evidence to demonstrate that the activities of the Bon Supro member have um, impacted upon them negatively. Yes, Carl, I think that that's very important to stress that although the grievance mechanism is about the actions of a Bon Sucro member, however, the person raising the complaint can be anyone or any organization as long as they can have, you know, demonstrate that they represent a person or a group being affected by the action of that member. Uh, the grievance mechanism is not applicable to a company who is not a member. So it wouldn't be applicable to an applicant member and it wouldn't be applicable to a company who have ceased to be a Bon Sucre member. Hope that answers the question. Okay. I don't think there is any more written questions. So if you would like to ask any question verbally or make any comments, whether it's about the grievance mechanism or any project I've presented earlier on, please feel free to raise your hand and I can unmute um, and allow you to talk. Jean-Claude, um, we are lucky to have Jean-Claude Autre on attending this webinar. Jean-Claude has been uh, with Bon Sucre for a number of years um, and uh, is currently the chair of our director's board. I would like to invite Jean-Claude uh, to give some uh, comments about um, 
this topic and um, and uh, maybe uh, give him give us a sense of uh, Bosucro direction on that matter. Jean Claude, uh, you can speak now. I've unmuted you if you click on the microphone. Thank Do you. Do you hear me? Now? We can, Jean Claude. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Celine and Carl, for your various exposés. I think this is a very enlightening uh, webinar. I think Tazi Tazi, we have learned a lot about the, 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 the complaints mechanism and, and what you have told us about. Uh, I think it will, it, will, it will give value, more value to Bon Sucre. It will enhance the, 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 the public image of Bon Sucre to have a grievance mechanism that anyone in the sugar cane world can use in case there is a problem with one of our members. The question I have is, is it common for, for other organisms like Bon Sucre to have regular complaints or is complaints rather an exception, an exceptional event rather than a, a, a sort of usual thing? Does it happen very commonly or is it very rare? Carl, would you like to? Uh, my experience is most, uh, most uh, industry bodies who are, are made up of you know, quite a number of members uh, in an industry, uh, they will have complaints, but the numbers are not necessarily great numbers unless there are lots of problems with the industry. You know, you're talking of a set, you know, up to 10 to 15 com com serious complaints a year, uh, at most for many um, industries. Uh, unless the industry is going through a particularly bad period or has a lot of uh, renegade members, if I can call, can call them that. Um, but very often, it, the complaints mechanism is a very good way of identifying where problems are emerging or things that the industry may not have thought about. So one of the values of having, a, you know, in my view, of a, of a good and structured and independent grievance mechanism like this um, is that it is forward-looking but it's also a learning mechanism because you can identify early on for example if there are particular problems in certain parts of the world or with certain companies and um, that can begin to emerge and um, it's helpful for the industry itself to get an early warning about that because internal complaints or internal grievances are often in those kind of sectors are not answered well um, or are sat upon um, whereas this is a much more transparent and um, you know, structured process. So hopefully it will, over time, reduce the number of complaints that might have emerged as people learn about good practice and things to avoid in terms of creating problems. Thank you. Do all members of ICEL have the grievance mechanism or is Bon Chicro rather an exception? Oh, um, so Jean-Claude, yes, uh, that's a very good question. So all sustainability standard schemes um, who are members of ICL are required as per the ICL assurance code to have some form of, of some form, sorry, of a grievance mechanism or complaint mechanism. So all organizations have developed um, a process. Uh, there have been like different approaches depending on the size of the organization, the number of complaints received. Uh, as part of developing our grievance mechanism, we were lucky enough to participate into uh, webinars and group discussion with other schemes to investigate um, the process they had put in place. So uh, I think the majority are handling complaints via their secretariat, which makes Bon Sucre approach working with SIDA innovative, as Carl mentioned, as we are outsourcing um, the, the process. We are regularly in touch with this other organization and I thank them very much for their input and their advice. As to the implementation phase, uh, particularly RSPO, um, in terms of how they're approaching the awareness raising programs to uh, liaise with workers and communities and encourage um, their voice to be heard. And that's something we're going to look into more closely as part of our uh, workers and community voice project uh, to target countries producing sugarcane and see how we can partner with other organizations to develop a, um, a capacity building program on that. 
Jean Claude, I would just I would just add in terms of um, the the idea of an independent assessment of a complaint is becoming increasingly common in um, businesses uh, in order to kind of do justice to um, your know, good grievance mechanism process uh, because the problem of um, handling grievances internally is often it's, it can be embarrassing for staff if they know the member well there might be questions by complainants of you know, have has this been properly investigated because they're just protecting their own members so those kind of concerns are removed uh, when you have a more independent process um, and, and in my view that you know this uh, this is an innovation in terms of the kind of organization Bon Sucro is but I think it will become I hope it will become more common because I think it is a good approach to dealing with conflict. Yeah. Up to now, thank you, Carl. Up to now at Bon Sucro, we have had throughout the existence of Bon Sucro very little complaints. It is possible that the mechanism was not there. Well, we had a mechanism. Now we have really updated it and, and make it, I would say, state of the art in, in the field. Maybe now we will really know whether there are complaints or not because if if we all that we have done it is which is being done there are no complaints or they are just say a few few ones then we will know that uh, we are we are on the right track but if we have dozens of complaints then we will have to start to worry but i don't expect dozens of complaints i expect maybe one or two complaints and we will we, we have the tool now to handle this not enter into uh, problems and embarrassment for Bon Sucre. I think I think you're absolutely right, Jean Claude. I mean, if I take my assurance hat or my ex auditor hat, I'm more worried about not finding out something than finding out something. Uh, for me, having those voices heard, those allegations, those comments, those concerns voiced, is a proof that the system is working. It's a proof that people feel empowered to raise issues and to seek remedy because it's not about sanctioning our members, it's not about punishing, it's about facilitating that dialogue, identifying the issues and addressing them, which is in line with the mission of Bon Sucro. So as for audits, I'm happy when I see non-conformities being raised and corrected and addressed and, and improvements happening. I think if we see complaints raised, whether it's through the grievance mechanism or through the process with the certification bodies or other, then it will be a sign that Bon Sucre is seen as an active player for change in the sugarcane industry. So, so when you don't see any non-conformities, you are worried? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, thank you very much, Jean-Claude, for your comments. Uh, I would like to see if any, anybody else would like to raise any questions or comments on this. Um, There's another question, Selina, on, um, from Nicholas Vyart. Uh, how can organisations participate in the Worker Voice project? Who shall they contact? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Carl. So on, on this project, we are at the very beginning of the journey. Again, uh, through the uh, public consultation, we've managed to identify a number of NGOs and other organizations who would be interested in supporting all those different services we're trying to develop to support complainants. If they are interested, if you are interested in um, supporting that service or maybe getting uh, a bit more information, you can contact my colleague Christelle at bonsucro.com or you can also uh, email info at bonsucro.com um, to, to say that you're interested and then we'll be in touch with you to uh, give you more information. Um, we are at the stage of mapping the stakeholders and then we're going to have a process to run a pilot in the coming month on specific locations and countries and then develop the network going forward. So it's the beginning of the journey. Thank you. Any Thank more you. Any more questions or comments? Otherwise we might bring the webinar to a close. Please feel free to uh, email us if you have uh, any question a bit later on. 
uh, we are at your uh, disposition to uh, answer any of those. And if you would like a follow-up call on a one-to-one -one basis to discuss more specific uh, part of the grievance mechanism or uh, a, an actual case um, you would like to um, mention or you would like a bit more information on the other options, yes, please feel free to get in touch and we can organize something. Thank you. Good very much thank you thank you thank you bye bye <laughs> thank you very much and i wish you all a very good day or evening depending where you are thank you very much thank you bye bye bye, -bye. bye everyone